to eat. I'll give you a better example because I believe this, this, this points directly to you. I believe you are on an airplane, am I correct? Or traveling with Bishop? Okay. Keep going. Keep and just before they were to lift off, Bishop just out of the blue would say, get up, and I want you to pray for everybody on the plane. Mm -hmm. You remember that? I know I did that. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Now, for some I think people, I think about Brian. I think he did that with Brian, but I, I would, he, I'll be with him. He'll do that too as well. Yes. Oh yeah, just, just impromptu. Listen, I want you to pray for the safety of every passenger. Stand up. <laughs> Don't bow your head and pray. Your head. No, stand up and pray. He do the same thing when we go out to eat in restaurants. Pray over everybody's food because he know that folks are not praying for him. They, they going to get down. <laughs> So what he would do was he would challenge us on the inside. Listen, if you are called of God to pray and to seek God, if you are called to be a believer in yes. God, Come then be one. Amen. Be one. Don't be like the world. Don't be like those, uh, uh, those Christians who are, uh, they, they punch in the clock at church and then after that it's over. No, this is a lifestyle. It's the way we live. Prayer is a lifestyle. It's the way we live. If you're walking down the street, listen, we, we had a, a, a gentleman by the name of James Tab, Pastor James Tab. Love him. <laughs> and Bishop would not let anybody who walked past him who was sick that he didn't pray for. He don't care where you were. Whether you was in the grocery store, the shopping mall, it didn't make a difference. If you walked past him and you were sick, oh, you, you getting prayed for. You getting prayed for. That's the kind of lifestyle that many of us have to live in this day and age. Understand this. Many of us are waiting around for things to get better. Mm. Come on. God, I, I, just, I, I just want things to get better, God. I want things to go back to normal. Mm. Understand this. Things are not going back to normal. <laughs> this is my prayer for me. God, I don't want things to go back to normal, and I'm not waiting around for better days. Come on. Make me better. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Make me better. Why make me better? Why make me better, God, and not the situation better? Because the situation may not ever get better. And I'm called to speak to that situation to make it better. Why? Because down inside of me lies the spirit of God that will speak to the situations in this day and age. Yes. I am called to do that. We are called to do that. Because that's what Jesus did. Ask the disciples when Jesus was chilling, sleeping in the boat while the storms and the things were raging. Those guys were tripping. Jesus down there sleeping. So even in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the storm, come on, you've got to be able to speak to those things and calm the raging sea. Now, I've looked at that scripture several times and I thought about how those elements were the elements on the outside, but there are storms on the inside of you, storms of depression. Storms of regret, those storms that lie on the inside of you, you've got to speak to those things inside of you, yeah. inside of your home, inside of your wife. You've got to speak to those things with the courage and the power of God that he has given you. Stop waiting around for things to get better. God, make me better Make me better as it relates to your word. Make me better, God, as it relates to my relationship yes. with you. Make me better, God, as I walk and talk with you every day. Make me better in my consecration, Lord. Make, Make me better. better in my surrender, Make God. Me better, Make God. me better, God, so Make that, Father, better. people can come to me, Lord, and be changed. Make me better, God. Amen. And not wait around for something else to happen. Because... As you see now with ISIS and all the other things, listen, if you think that is something that's going on right now, Black Lives Matter, ISIS is going on, if you think that is terrible, God has yet to unleash, to lift his hand 
and to allow you to see just how bad things are going to get. And that's when he said, listen, things are going to get bad, but I have overcome the world. Yes. I've overcome the world. So he's training us to be the overcomers in this day and age. He's not looking for any weak Christians, weak believers. And this is the purpose as to why men and women who are engaged in marriage need to know the power of oneness. Come on. There is power in being one. Now God is, 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 is you have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus, you have God, but one, yeah. oneness in them, there is power in that. And the only way to tap into that power is to get with God. You have to do that. You have to get with God. So that's, here's the question. Where are we? What are we doing? Are there people in our family who are yet to be changed, yet to be saved? And what are we doing about that? How are we being moved on the inside to do what God has called us to do? Are we even listening to God? Are we even taking the time to spend with God so that we can hear from God and do what he's asked us to do? And then what are we going to do about that? Because if you're waiting around for things to get better, you are deceived. This that is going on right now, this is the plan of God. For things to get the way that they are, this is the plan of God. It's in the scriptures. So at some point, we got to get a clue. We have to be changed. Not the situation. Our financial situation may not ever change, but God changed my attitude so that I'll have the faith to believe you more for the things that you've called me to do. Because whatever God has called you to do, he's going to provide you to make it happen. Come on. Amen. I understand this. God is not broke. Yeah. <laughs> By no means. He owns it all. And so rather than me waiting around for money to come to me, listen, I'm already rich yeah. because I have him on the inside of me. Yeah. And in any moment, I could speak to my financial situation and cause it to come alive Amen. because of what's on the inside of me. Yeah. Not because I got grace or bill collector just happened to forget <laughs> that I needed to pay. <laughs> come on. It's because of the God in me. Yes. What does the God in you look like? Yes. What does the God in you look like? Is he mighty? Or is he small? Preach a bishop, come on. Come on. What does the God in you look like? My father there, 50 years of marriage. You know, we... We highlight so many things here in America uh, the, through the Guinness Book of World Records, the, the tallest person, <laughs> the shortest person. We're living in an age now of 50 years of marriage. Yes. Yes. 50 years and couples cannot go beyond six months. Come on. Come on. Because they refuse to give up and allow God to change them on the inside. They refuse to do that. You're not gonna change me because I'm my own individual. This is the way I've always been. You're just gonna have to get with it. 50 years of marriage. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm completely amazed at that because in my lineage, the only person that I know that is close to that is my own dad and mom. The generation nowadays, they're skipping. Listen, there are, uh, there, there are more people seeking counseling, psychiatrists, all types Come of on. things to try to fix what they call marriage when it's right there in the book. Right there. It's right there in the right Bible. There. All you have to do is submit, read the scriptures. That's a novelty idea. <laughs> 
And then once you read the scriptures, take the scriptures and you all read together so that you can submit to the word of God. And this is what is so powerful to me because when I hear that somebody has been married for 50 years, see, they understand the, the ebbs and flows of what goes on. They understand the sacrifice that must be made between two individuals. They understand the give and take, but they also understand it takes God. Yes. Amen. Amen. It cannot be done without him. Yes. You want to preach today? Oh, you got it. Oh, you see? You see where I'm at? I got my pop. Go ahead. 